one dimensional i didn't really build on the character so much but once i went back and i thought okay i now i need to fill up the character bit background the their development part of it is i drew draw inspiration from real life from the people who interact who i interact with and uh, you know adding a few quirks here right adding a few characteristics of someone or quirks from someone else and so i try to imagine okay if i meet this person how would i you know consider that person to be how would i like that person to be if it's a good person i mean someone who i want to make that person attractive so what were the kind of things i might want to see or general public might want to see so yes that took a bit of work and a few revisions <laughs> but got there in the end but also to add to what pamela says writing a short story is a lot lot more tougher than writing a a novel because of the fact that you would actually have to compress everything in that 10 15 pages and build a character tell the story end the story so i think if pamela has done a number of short stories good enough to actually get into a book then i think it starts off to your writing abilities thank you any other questions are not there what why one will be passive in that scenario <laughs> gives the ideas one man right <laughs> or, or maybe he is the character in the book and she writes about him so but yeah this is a point yeah hardly i think there is a topic yeah yeah love in days of the bankster love in the days of the bank stuff so so we can talk about love affairs of a, of, of people working in a bank it's going to be very interesting <laughs> any other questions guys people have... that you want to write what is the first thing as author when you start writing do you think of a book that will be good or you think of a topic that will be um she asked whether when you're thinking of an idea of a book do you think it is going to be a best seller as successful or do you think of it as a good book so i said neither because you're just thinking of a concept at least that's what i'm i think i just think of a concept and, and an idea and then take the organic growth of the characters and the story um keeping a broad structure and outline in mind to write so I'm writing a trilogy so I'm taking the character from my first book and developing her through the second book and the third book so it's far tougher for me because for most authors the entire story finishes in those 250 pages and it's done and the character growth and everything and the plot points and everything is completely done but I, for a trilogy I've taken the second and and um, seen how a normal person's life will continue so it's a slice of life and how you and how you continue because when you finish the book your life is an end so why should a characters for me so see when you asked pamela as to what would she prefer well literary success or commercial success she told you all the right answers okay but the last point was if i have to choose one it's got to be successful author and in writing success is normally measured by the number of copies sold okay uh no author starts writing <coughs> assuming that he's got a great thought but he knows nobody will buy it okay he writes starts writing assuming that yeah here i have a good idea which can be made into a great book which can be very successful and i think that's pamela's thought behind writing this book and most authors start that way so i think uh, what's important for an author is is commercial success because that's what gets you fame that's what gets you money and that's what gets you more writing contracts and today if pamela were to write great english but you, all you guys standing here if you guys don't buy this book then mr sharma is not going to give her the next contract <laughs> so i think it's important that we make pamela into a commercially successful author and then if you are a good author literary success will come automatically because five people reading a book does not make it a literary success 
5,000 reading it and appreciating it will make it a better literary success. Uh, any advice to budding authors in the crowd? This feels so strange, you know, ever since I told people I have written a book and it's going to be published and all, so many people come and ask, do you have any tips? And I'm like, okay, I just being published, I don't have any tips, I'm just praying that, okay, getting some good reviews and, you know, it being, as Ravi said, a success. Um, I would just say, keep writing, I mean, and uh, keep trying. It happened for me. I'm sure it will happen for everyone who are really have their heart into this. Okay, uh, we have uh, Shoma Narayan here. Welcome, Shoma. A big round of applause for Shoma, India's <laughs> India's only Milson Boone author to go international, and she currently has a four book contract with Milson Boone. She was a winner of uh, the Milson Boone Passion Contest, and. Uh, she herself is a very senior banker with one of the global banks in this country. So, Shoma Narayan. Pretty much just about started off myself. Uh, so, I read the book, I really liked it. Uh, Thank there you. were a couple of little questions I had here and there, which I'll ask you later on. So, what I found very interesting, it's a very similar genre to what I write in as well. Uh, so, what I really liked about it was the way, you know, you pulled in the international influence and the Indian bait and all of that. It was drafted really well. Thank so, you. Uh, so, this was your first uh, foray into writing or uh, uh, writing on? I've been writing for a long time, but uh, my first publication. <laughs> so, any words of advice? Not to watch out? Uh, How to sell a book? Selling a book is something that I've also kind of just started figuring out. So, we did this whole PR stint and all of that, a couple of, you know, uh, magazine interviews, TV interviews and all of that. But I think what really works is when people like the book and someone who's actually read about it talks about it. So, I guess the main thing is to, you know, get it out in the shelves and have as many people read it as possible. Um, I, I've read your book oh. as well. So, uh, how difficult is it to write, uh, say, a Mills and Boons, um, which has standard features of what a Mills and Boone should have uh, as compared to, say, an, just another novel? Uh, I think you tend to work far more within a structure. Uh, so the skeleton of the story is, so to speak, uh, more defined than it would be if you know, you're just writing uh, from scratch. Uh, but what I would like to say is that Milson Boone is that way and you know, very flexible. So, I, I don't know, I've pretty much written it the way I wanted to. So, of course, there's a basic thing of the love story and the happy ending. But then the way you define the characters, the way you mold the whole thing is pretty much up to you. So How would you describe the passionate scenes that every Mills and Boons... So, how, how do you tackle those? Uh, how, how do you... Yes, <laughs> James, as Ravi says. Uh, no, so, uh, the good part is, for me at least, as an author, because I'm not hugely comfortable very intense stuff on the page. So, uh, MBs are very, again, uh, like I said, it's very structured, right? So, you have these different levels. So, they're actually called heat levels. So, I'm writing like pretty much at a very basic heat level, so to speak. Uh, so, that's like, you know. I have one question to Pamela. And uh, an issue while writing this book, in the sense that uh, you wrote something, your husband read it, Maybe your parents read it, and then they said, "Nay, nay, beta, ye mat likho. Isko kato." You know, lo kya kahenge? Did you ever face something like that while writing a book? Honestly, no. <laughs> my husband didn't say anything, though, and uh, I didn't really ask my parents. So. <laughs> okay, that's interesting.